Hello, hello, all of my crafty friends. Today I am here guest designing for Crafters Castle Design Team, and I'm going to be bringing you guys a fun project using some of their digital papers and ephemera. So I've already printed out some of the ephemera that I'm going to use on my project today. As you can see, it's like down on the farm themed, and I've printed out a couple of these images as well as this pattern paper which I really thought was cute but I loved this pattern paper. So I'm going to use these for our image today as well as this Farmer Marcy which comes from La La Land Crafts and this was for the May 2020 kit and I just thought that it would embellish these papers very very nicely. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp out that Marcy. I'm bringing in my Misty some Memento Tuxedo Black ink and I'm using Nina Classic Crest Solar White 80 pound cardstock and I'm going to stamp Marcy out on this cardstock first then I am going to be using uh, some paper piecing for the image. So I'm going to bring out another very old paper pack. It's called Homemade. And I am going to be stamping out some of these areas on Marcy to paper piece. So these are some of the papers that I had left over from this homemade stamp set. And I thought it really... Um, complemented this other paper pack very well. So I'm going to stamp Marcy out on each of these colored papers and then I will cut out different elements of her outfit from the different colors of pattern paper that I feel like will be cohesive with the pattern papers that I'm using for the primary portions of my card. So I'm going to use this red to do um, her shirt and her shoes. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to fussy cut this. It is pretty easy to fussy cut and I'm not going to leave all this in because I'm pretty sure most of you guys know how to do this. But I fussy cut all the different pieces out of the different pattern papers to create an outfit for her. And then we're going to go and I'm going to dry fit these pieces on just to kind of get an idea of what this is going to look like for us. Us, and I think that it was super, super adorable the way that this all came together. I have used three different parts of this pattern paper pack to create an outfit for her. And this is pretty much what we come up with. And that will leave me with coloring her skin and her hair. So I'm going to show you the different colors that I'm going to be using for skin and hair tones on today. And then we are going to go into the coloring. Now I'm going to lay down a base of this V marker in order to create um, a shadow. <laughs> Excuse me. A shadow for her skin. Now this will be covered by a earth tone, but it just brings a different hue to the skin of um, when you are using a darker complexion in your coloring. So I'm just kind of mapping out where I'm going to have my shadow areas in this image and I am tracing that out with this violet marker. And once I get that done, I will move on to then going in with my darkest earth tone and working my way down in order to do my skin tones. So once I get done with that and I am going in and doing my shadows in all the different places that I feel as if um, they would be. For example, I feel like her arm is kind of behind her shirt on the right side and so therefore it would cast a shadow inside her legs where her pants are coming over her knees and those type of things. I feel like those are areas where shadows would be in addition to where her hairline is and where the hat is, her head sitting on top of her neck of course, um, her nose. I always like to try to define the nose and the cheeks in my images when I'm working with some of these stamps. So those are the areas that I have used as my shadow areas in this particular image. So I'm going to go ahead and go in with a darker color. And like I said, I'm going directly over that violet because it's um, 
color glazing. So it doesn't look as if she has a purple hue to her skin in the grand scheme of things, but it does provide a more natural um, skin tone when you are completely done. So it's weird. I know it felt weird when I was doing it. I was a little concerned throughout the entire process, but it came out very well. So sometimes you have to do what Kelly Latavola calls trust exercises. Now, it wasn't a trust exercise for me because I've seen her do it a ton of times, so I knew that it was going to work. So while I'm doing this coloring, I just want to say that I am so, so excited to have the opportunity to guest design for Crafters uh, Castle and Taylor made cards for you. All of the information regarding the paper pack that I'm using, the giveaway and everything will be linked in the description box below. So please make sure you read all of that information. In addition to ways for you to get in contact with me, I love interacting with you guys. If this is your first time here, welcome, welcome. I really, really appreciate you. If you like what you see, please give me a like and leave me a comment because I absolutely love communicating with you guys down in the comment section below. You can also reach out to me on any source of social media. It's all linked in the description box. I love seeing what you guys are doing so you can always tag me in things. So you guys can see that I'm going in a second time. I'm usually pretty conservative when I'm doing my coloring on the first round and I just wanna get some color down and then I go in and I'm a little more liberal the second time with my colors and I really get those colors in the places that I want them to be and give some more depth and dimension into my image. So that was, that's typically how I do things. Um, because I always know that it's easier to add in more color than to take color away. So once I get some color down, I can typically see, okay, here is where I want to stay lighter. This is what I want to get darker. I want a shadow here. I want to bring the shadow in more and those types of things. So once we get done with that, I'm gonna go in and do her ears as well because they are poking out. And then we're going to bring in this blue marker again, one of those trust exercises. And I'm going to put in some blue uh, just squiggles in her hair and you won't see these initially eventually once we're all done but it will provide a more um dimensional look to her hair. Now I want a curly coily pattern for her hair in this instance so that's why I am simply putting in these squiggles and I started with my darkest color after I put in that B marker and I'm going to work all the way out to my lightest color and that is where we're going to continue, continue to fill in all of those places within her hair. So once we get done with her hair and her skin, this is what we come up with and then we are going to go ahead and we are going to piece her uh, outfit together before I uh, get ready to put the card together. So we have her hat and then we have the brim of her hat. So I've decided to do about two pieces on the outfit each in each of the three patterns that I chose to provide some cohesiveness and to make it look like it's an outfit that actually went together. So I did her shirt in the red, the brim of her hat in the blue, her actual cap in the khaki, the jacket in the khaki, the pants in the blue, and her shoes in the red. And I felt like that worked out really well. And it's a really, really fun technique to do. So I would like to know from you guys if you ever do any type of paper piecing like this. And if you do, is it something that you enjoy? If you haven't, why haven't you tried it? I really think that this brought a lot of dimension to this card. So now we're gonna come back with all of my pieces and I'm gonna start with this piece of ephemera and I'm going to just glue the edges, the left and the right, very, very, close to the edge and I'm using some liquid glue. This is my art glitter glue from maymaymadeit.com and I'm going to glue down those sides and then I'm going to just sit that aside for a second and I'm going to allow that to dry, keeping my opening at the top. Now I've had my Cricut cut out the word hello three times in cardstock and once in vinyl and I'm going to go ahead and stack that up and it will be our sentiment for the outside of our card. So I'm gonna carefully stack that up and try to get that as 
close to being on top of each other as possible. Now, it doesn't matter if it is perfect because ultimately, if it peeks out a little, it provides a nice white shadow behind your uh, black, which provides even more dimension to your card. So that's what this looks like once we're done. And we're going to bring in this um, jam uh, label. That's the word that I was looking for. And I am going to glue this dimensional hello over the top of it. And I thought that that was a great way to accent our um, sentiment for this card. I thought it came out so super cute. So next I'm going to bring in the pieces to my actual card front. I've cut down these pieces to be the green plaid uh color is four and three quarters by six and three quarters and the other is four and a quarter by six and a quarter and now I have the Marcy and I have this label and I have my hello now I also cut out a tag that I wanted to use to insert inside this piece of ephemera that is going to serve as our, our little pocket I'm going to go ahead and glue that little pocket down to the front of our card and I did it a little offset I'm going to then take some foam tape and I'm going to pop up the Marcy just on a single layer of foam tape so that it gives a little bit of dimension to the front of our card. So once I get done with that, I'm going to go ahead and place her down on the right side of the card and that's where she will be for this image. Once I get done with that, I will bring in that tag that I was speaking of that's going to insert in here and it provides a small place that you can write something to your recipient and I'm gonna bring in some black and white twine. I brought in black and white because I thought that it would uh, go well with our sentiment since that was the only thing that was black and white on the card thus far. I'm gonna feed that through the little hole that I created and I'm going to tie that in, slip that into the pocket and then I'm going to tie a bow. To me that gives an indication that there is something that you can pull on and you can write a note to whoever your recipient is that you are providing this card to. Once I get done with that I am going to place my hello. Now because this hello is going to overlap that little uh, card piece I'm going to put a piece of foam tape on either edge of this hello uh, sentiment and that will provide enough um, consistency across in order to ensure that it is the same uh, height of the rest of the card. And I just used liquid glue in the center of that and this is what the front of our card base is looking like. So now I'm gonna work on the inside of our card and I have brought in the same colors of cardstock and I'm gonna layer those the same way that I did on the outside. And then this little recipe card I'm gonna put in the inside to serve as a place to write your sentiment to your individual. So you can write a nice hand note and it looks really cute because it's like a recipe, a recipe for happiness, a recipe for love, whatever you want to do a recipe for and you can then add whatever sentiment you want. I have a top folding five by seven card base that I'm going to use for this card and that is going to provide an eighth of an inch border on the outside of our card because our green plaid is again six and three quarters by four and three quarters so that's going to add just a nice white border around the edges i'm going to do the exact same thing for the inside portion of our card and then we will be getting close to the end of our card. One of the last things that I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in some Trinity embellishments. These are called Forever Green and it's a confetti mix and it has several different hues of green confetti sequins. They're flat for this card and I really, really loved these and loved the extra little shine, shimmer, and sheen that it provided to the front of our card. And once I get done with those and sprinkling those throughout the card, the last thing that I'm going to do is I am going to bring in what is my favorite, 
my Spectrum Noir Sparkle Pen. It is a part of my life that I just cannot let go. So I'm going to bring that in and I am going to shimmer Marcy up head to toe, face, skin, hair, outfit, everything. And once I get her shimmered up, that will be the end of our card today. Again, thank you guys for allowing me to guest design today. It was an amazing thing and I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye-bye.